never fail before we trust. The one is that his eyes is like fire. We trust. The hair as white as wood. We trust you, Jesus. We trust. We trust. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe in my spirit that the Lord has started visiting somebody here. The word rapture does not exist in the Bible. What is in the you won't see rapture in the Bible. All you see is cut up. Cut up. Christians said rapture. We try to explain it. But it's cut up. The Bible said in a twinkle of an eye, we shall be caught to be with him in the sky. And that's what is called rapture. Then if it is to be caught up, sometimes we do have caught up experience where you are here on earth, you feel you are seeing yourself over there. And the Bible said, there's no sorrow there. It is called heaven on the earth. There's no sorrow. If someone is sick and you are caught up you can imagine what will happen to you if rapture takes place. When you get there, will you still be sick? So if you can be caught up, then sickness draws. We can have heaven on the earth experience even before rapture. Jesus said, when we pray, pray in this man, thy kingdom come, that we be done on the earth as it is in heaven. So in case you are sick this morning or this afternoon, if you have been caught up in this caught up experience is still going on even as God's servant comes get ready what cannot stand heaven will stand you your amen is weak I said what can stand heaven will stand you somebody's living here not the same way you came in the mighty name of Jesus Elijah said if you can see me when I'm taking off the impossible. He said, what you have asked is not possible. He said, it looked impossible. But if you can see me when I'm caught up, when we are caught up, anything can happen. Is somebody ready this afternoon? Just package your worship offering. Let's honor Jesus with it. You demarcate. Loser's side and winner's side. Which side are you? We will soon find out. You know how you don't lose us. Do you know how you don't lose us? They are just quiet. They are full of disappointment. Their expectations are cut off. How do you not lose us? They make noise. Their expectations are granted. Their expectations are exceeded. Which one do you belong? and hymns. It means we talk psalms and hymns. It's our language. Where you say you are full of the Holy Ghost and you close your mouth. It's bad. The Holy Ghost is not there. And the Holy Ghost came with a sound like a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And the Bible said, and God has gone up with a sound. With a noise. He said, make a joyful noise, O ye land. My God, my goodness. Listen. Music is not, is not praise. Praise is, is different from music. Music is an organized sound that is pleasing to the ear. But praises may not be organized. 
but it must be pleasing to the ears of Jehovah. Praises can be noise. You're just shouting. You're just happy. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. They shouted. The wall of Jericho collapsed. They shouted. Climate we must eyes open. Somebody shout. Because he lives, he's alive. Let me tell you something. Every time God wants to bless his people, he sends a prophet. When Satan wants to deal with you, he sends a man. Satan won't come himself. I asked you in workers' training last week, Monday. I said, Have you seen God anywhere? Physically, I said, They said the guest speaker tonight is Evangelist God. Uh, Reverend Dr. God. If God land, where will you stand to hear him? Even clearing his throat to start speaking, everybody will melt. But he speaks from his people. If Satan can destroy you by sending a man, then God will change your story by sending a man. John said, I am not the I am not the light, but I am the man that bear witness for the light. Once you see me, you will have a witness that there is a light. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So in this service, we have a man chosen by God, anointed. Of course, you know that we don't use our pulpits to do relationship. I've got a lot of friends who are preachers, but I don't invite all of them. We invite people who have something to offer. And this month is our month of money. Carrier must be honored. And but a whole lot has shifted in the spirit. Everything is just being rearranged. You have to follow the Holy Ghost. Even today, we have to rearrange women program. Exceptional Queen Conference. Everything is rearranged. We just have to follow Jesus. So with Jesus, Joe, he has sent us one of his choice servants. All the way from, he came from afar. All the way from United States of Imo State. Let's receive the Gregor servant tonight. With our voice, shout of praise. Let's welcome Evangelist Doctor Kinsley Akujobi. We call him the Oracle himself. Somebody give him a shout. Come on, lift up your hand and shout. My battle is over. Walk up to 16,000 person and tell them, then go see your miracle, then go see her. Just tell them, then go see her, then go see her. Can you look at the last person and say, you too, you go see her. Tell the other person, say, you go see her. How many of you believe they will see your miracle? Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our hands to heaven as we just worship the King of Kings once again? We can't be tired of worshiping him. Just worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am. He that changes all things and here in minute of change. Open your mouth and let's worship him. If you know him, you worship him better. Don't worship him because you're in church. Worship him because you know him. Open your mouth and worship him.
miracle. Listen, if you understand the prayer, you're going to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. It can only take a miracle for a non-entity to become a celebrity without merit. It can only take a miracle for Mordecai to be honored by a man that have rejected him. Say, I am next in line for a miracle. Open your mouth and turn into prayer. I am next in line for a miracle. Yesterday might be my neighbor's turn. This meeting is my turn for a miracle. I am next in line for a miracle. Open your mouth and cry to her. Wonderful, beautiful wife and the host of the pastors and the leadership of this church. Evangelist Uchume makes my publicity no worry very cheap. Once his name appears in flyer, the hall must be full. So it makes we can just print few flyers and have much crowd. Because if we if we follow publicity the way it should be, the hall might collapse. That is to tell you that he has become a force. There are people who are echoes. There are some who are voices. And there are some who are forces. Combination of forces makes a voice. Am I talking to somebody here? He is not a voice. He has become a force. So whenever he appears in the city of Owere, whether you do publicity or not, his name alone is a household name. He makes our work easy. Am I talking to somebody here? And then we save small money in publicity. Can we put our hands together to celebrate the grace of God? <laughs> uh, behind every man that is making an impact, it's not just a woman, but it's a beautiful, virtuous woman. Whether you like it or not, God's servant. His wife is born again. I'm telling you. There are people who came to make statements, not preaching. So that you can quote me any day after 21 days. Am I talking to somebody here? If I preach, you might not remember what I said. But if I make statements, you can pick what I said. And in the next 21 days, it shall be prophetic confirmations in your life. Ezekiel chapter 37. If you have a Bible, you read. 37 from verse 1. So, man of God, I'm always excited having the honor to be in your midst. I do not take you for granted. I do not take you for granted. I want to appreciate the entire pastorate. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel 37. Look at your neighbor before you read that scripture and give that person a smile. Just a smile. That thing can cure many things. Of course, you know that frowning is not a mark of holiness. 
is a sign of frustration. Ask your neighbor, are you frustrated? Ask again. Ask again. All right. Ezekiel 37. You find it and your voice is loud enough. Please, let's have you read from verse 1 to 10. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay. It was full of bones. Okay. 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 He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Oh, sovereign Lord, okay. you alone know. You alone know. Then he it. said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, mm. dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Mm. This is what the sovereign Lord says to mm. these bones. I will make bread enter you okay. and you will come to life. Mm. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put bread in you and you will come to life. Go ahead. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as, so I, I, was prophesied commanded. as I was commanded. And uh, as I was prophesying, there was a noise. There was a noise. Somebody said there was a noise. Go a ahead. rattling sound. A rattling sound. And the bones came together. And bones came together. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. I looked. I looked. And tendons okay. and flesh appeared on them. Okay. And skin covered them. But there was a bread. But there was no bread in them. There was no then bread. He said to me, then he said to me, prophesy to the bread. Okay. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four wings, O bread, and break into this land, and they may live. That they may live. So I prophesied. As I was commanded. Somebody shout as I was commanded. And bread entered them. And bread they entered came to them. life and stood up on their feet. A and vast became army. a seeding great army. Let me start by saying there can never be and it came to pass without a thought says the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? Whenever you hear and it came to pass, there is always a thought says the Lord. Today, I am going to speak on the topic, like I said, it's not a preaching. I'm going to release some statements, and then we'll rise up to enforce the word in prayer. On the topic, turning your prophecy into reality. Turning your prophecy into what? Reality. I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a great army. Valley full of dry bones became a seeding great army. Valley full of dry bones became a seeding great army. Why? Because somebody prophesied. Before we look into it came to pass, let's look at the power behind prophecy. Because you can never appreciate the reality of prophecy until you understand the power behind prophecy. Am I talking to somebody here? I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was noise. Because of prophecy, there was a movement. The prophetic is one of the major things, if not the only thing that involves divinity in the affairs of humanity. Anytime God wants to move a person to the next level, anytime God wants to move a nation to their next level, he moves on the wings of the prophetic. Am I talking about here? And God can do nothing except that which he revealed to my servant, the prophet. A young man said to me, I told him, I said, you will travel out of the country. And you become a multi-millionaire. He asked me a question. He said, does it mean if you don't say it, it will not happen? I said, yes. Yes. If I swallow the prophecy, you will die in Nigeria. But because I have said it, divinity is involved in their matters. Am I to somebody here? Can God do anything until he reveals to his servant the prophet? No! He cannot do anything until he has revealed it unto his servant. Meaning that divinity is stranded without the prophetic. Am I coming to somebody here? I am trying to make you understand the power behind prophecy so that you can appreciate when you begin to live in the reality of prophecy. Many are carrying prophecy and they are tired of carrying prophecy. Because the beauty is not in thus says the Lord. The beauty is and it came to pass. But you cannot appreciate it came to pass until you place value on thus says the Lord. Am I coming to somebody? I prophesied as I was commanded. Why? It's one of the avenues that involves divinity in the affairs of humanity. 
Why didn't God say that? Why didn't God do it himself? He needed to move on the wings of the prophecy. That's why after this meeting, every prophecy hanging on your head, 21 days from now, it shall be turned to fulfillment. If you shout a strong amen, your miracle begins tonight. See that? Let me also add that you don't prophesy because you feel like prophesying. No, sir. Like I hear people say, I feel like prophesying. It's not a product of feeling. I am a shot here. Am I to somebody here? I hear people say, I feel like prophesying. No, sir. You are wrong. I prophesied as I was commanded. Why? There cannot be prophecy until there is urgency. It is urgency that provokes prophecy. Am I talking to somebody here? I prophesied because I was under pressure until your condition gets to a state of emergency. Prophecy cannot be provoked. It's not something somebody feels like prophesying. That's why when somebody gives you a prophecy on that feelings, it becomes leprosy. It doesn't produce. Am I to somebody here? When they give you prophecy on that feeling, I feel like prophesying and somebody makes an utterance over your life and 21 years has passed. Not one has come to pass. It is not under commandment. It's under a feeling. It can produce. But when a matter becomes an urgent issue, it has the capacity to provoke prophecy from a man. Jesus came into a city and they brought a man that was deaf. He has a problem with his ear and he has an impediment of speech. They brought him to Jesus. The Bible said in Matthew 7 verse 31, Jesus looked at the man and he sighed. Why was he sigh? Because the condition of that man has entered a state of emergency. Under that pressure, he shouted, Efata! And the ears opened. That was prophecy under pressure. You don't prophesy for pleasure. Am I talking to somebody here? The good news there is uh, many of you are carrying prophecy, but you are looking for who to prophesy to you. That's the error of the church. Jesus said, As men that are thirsty come unto me. When they came, he said to them, Out of your belly shall produce. You came with a glass of water, but he's telling you that you are carrying rivers of water. You are looking for who to prophesy to you when you are a product of prophecy. You carry it on the inside. The reason why your own can't work is because you have not gotten to a point of emergency that can provoke what is on the inside of you. Jesus was hungry. Under that pressure, he caused a victory. I'm talking to somebody here. Under that pressure, he expected to see food, but food couldn't come. Because of the prophet, the pressure on him to eat, he placed the cause on the table. If your situation must change, it must come to a point of emergency. Am I to somebody here? I prophesied as I was commanded. I was under pressure. Hear me. What happened in that scripture is what I call prophetic construction. As I prophesied, there was a noise. There was a construction. Like the one they are doing over there, which we call Aru DC. Rotas demolition construction. If you come to Obrena, for many of you who have not been there for 30 years, even though it's 45 minutes drive from here, if you return there now, we look like America from the other side. Not everybody that said they came from South went to South Africa. Some went to South, Abba South. So if you come to Obrena, the kind of picture you see, awesome. Why? Because a man has entered into construction, demolition and construction. But I prophesied to somebody. No devil will demolish your miracle. As I prophesied, there was a prophetic construction. But hear me, child of God. There cannot be a prophetic construction until there is a prophetic declaration. It is prophetic declaration that provokes prophetic construction. I prophesied. And then, heavens involve themselves into it. Am I talking to somebody? I am. I'm, I've not entered the, the the force that converts prophecy, but if somebody does not understand the power behind prophecy, he will even know when he's living in the reality of the prophecy. He will know. Many of you, your prophecy has already been materialized, but you don't even know. I came to turn you into your own prophet. That what evangelist you may is doing, you too can do it. 
your amen is suffering from HIV positive. Am I talking to somebody here? Whatever your pastors are doing, you too can do it. Why? As many that passed, I will show them that they have a glass of water, but inside of them is rivers. You are looking for somebody to dash you money for house rent when God has made you a landlord. You are looking for a husband that will change the economic condition of your family when God has made you a distributor. Who told you men need husbands to survive? Who told you? Like every young lady's prayer point now is marriage, life partner. And they carry a list of men. Give a lady good evening. He will write your, she will write your name as a suitor. And you become, I am Allah. One day, one lady came to me and brought five names of young men. Say, man of God, Onye who came. See, for you to attract five men, you must be a prostitute. Five men pursuing you. It won't done that. Okay, won't sugar. I looked at her, I said to her, God is not an author of confusion. Remove the names of these people. Write the names of your grandfather that is dead. Write the names of all the dead men. Take it to one prophet. They will do me. A mecca is your own, which is later a mecca. Later, make. And I give you the same formula. Carry the names of dead men. Give it to one prophet. As far as you are desperate for marriage, one late man is your husband. Foolish people. The people I'm talking about are not here. Is it? They're not here. No. I hate insulting people. Because if they are here, I will not talk. If be, they are not, that's why I'm feeling free to talk about it. I don't like it. Have you ever read in the Bible that any woman was waiting for a husband? A woman was waiting for a husband. It is not in the Bible. Every woman that was married was married as an asset, not a liability. Yes, to wait for a man makes you a liability. That's why you don't have wives, you have furniture. Men these days don't marry wives, they marry furniture. When a furniture is old, two things are involved. Either you refurbish the furniture or you replace the furniture. When a man knows that he is an answer to your prayer, how will he value you? How will he value you? How will he? When the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth, that is, you have the capacity to make a get man because